Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King and today I'm going to be giving you part 11 of what if Naruto was given a gift that will change everything. Remember to get this one to 200 like as usual, share this to all of your friends in your social media platform and also I'll be leaving a link down in the description for Anime King 3. Later on I'm going to be posting a brand new episode of what if Naruto awakened the yellow renegon after his exile so stay in tune for that and I do hope that you guys enjoy and remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice and you enjoyed the videos on both anime king and anime king 3 go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the anime king family and thank you for all of your help and your support and yeah without further ado what do you say begin this new episode Start the intro. So, the last spot we left off, ever since Naruto has spoken to Jashin and she separated the Kyubis chalk from his soul, Naruto has changed as Hawk was noticed that a lot, as he wanted to spar with her but she had to go to the hospital. As Naruto went to take a mission, Naruto was currently in the Fire Nation border as he was making his way, as he was watching the rejects, Orochimaru cursed rejects, someone was letting them out. As he made his way and watched him, using them as a tracker to make his way towards the Yahido where they came from. Going there, Naruto followed the candles after taking care of the experiment. As a man with glasses came out, but Naruto wastes no time and ended him in seconds. Gorin then called out for Kabuta, she was surprised he came back so quickly, but when she saw Naruto, she was shocked. It was then the both of them started the battle. And to her surprise, these chains could now break through her crystal barrier as the two of them clashed violently, destroying the idol that they were in. But Gorin soon come to realize she stood absolutely no chance and Naruto is also using his blade now, not focusing on his chains alone anymore. Gorin summoned up her chakra, she created a massive crystal that was ricocheting beams down towards him that tore a large trench into the earth. As Naruto created his drill on his hand, as he infused it with the Kayubi's chakra and leaped towards her, as he smashed right through her crystal hitting her. As Naruto made his way to see her not moving, he cursed himself when he realized she was dead, as his attack had caved in her chest, as Naruto didn't want her to die so quickly. Coming back to the village, Haku noticed that something was wrong with him, as he wanted to learn how to heal, but he could not, given the potency of the Kayubi's chakra through his system. As Haku spent time and spoke to him right there, as she went rather close to him to the point where they were almost touching as she wanted to be closer as she kissed him and he didn't fight back he actually found himself enjoying the kiss as he kissed her back as she gave a beautiful smile and told him that she has to go now to the hospital it was strange but he saw something that he liked it was interrupted though as Naruto was break from his thoughts when someone arrived a masked man wearing the Akatsuki clothing called himself Toby as Naruto attacked him but he faced right to the man. But it seems like Toby was more shocked when Naruto chains pierced him. Toby couldn't believe it as he quickly sucked himself away in a sword and vortex. As Toby arrived at a lair, removing his mask, it was none other than Obito Uchiha. As he couldn't understand. As he remembered a memory of Kushina. And when he first found out about her chains. But those chains were able to rip right through him. Despite him activating his Kamui. This was troublesome. He will have to send out the big guns for this. The Night Hill Jinjoki need to be brought down. Even though they haven't started yet. Yes, they need to take down the boy. Restrain him somehow. As he sent pain. Some time passed as Naruto and Jirai were currently on a mission. When they were talking about the next candy for Okagi. Jirai suddenly pushed Naruto out of the way as a black rod passed Naruto's face. As he heard a voice. 
It was really concerning because he didn't even sense anything. As a voice spoke as fast as ever, Jerry Sente. So yeah guys, so basically that's what left off you guys can switch across the blazing trick for yourself. So what is the beginning this new episode? Naruto snapped his head around as he saw the orange chair man in the Akatsuki clothing as piercing was in the man's nose, three to each side, as his eyes, his eyes were strange, something inside of Naruto stirred uncomfortably when those eyes swept over him, those purple ring eyes, Naruto was certain it was a dojutsu, but he has never seen anything like it before, as he looked at the headband, the hidden ring, he has never heard of hidden ring ninjas producing someone like this, S-Rank Shinobis except for Hanzo, after all, the Akatsuki was made up of all S-Rank criminals, so another S-Rank from the inner rain that was surprising. But Naruto wasn't the only one shocked as Jiraiya stood there. Yaiko? As Naruto glanced towards Jiraiya, you know him. As Jiraiya looked at Yaiko, from head to toe, I thought I did. He was a part of the three orphans that I trained a bit after the second Shinobi war. Great. Naruto thanks even more. The man was strong enough to be in the Akatsuki and he was also trained by Asanin. Fascinating glimpse into your past aside. Any idea why he wants me dead? No clue, last I heard that Thrill had died. Yaiko is dead sensei. Now, there is only pain. Naruto did not like the way Jiraiya's eyes narrowed that name. And he was correct. I have heard rumors that some mysterious shinobis calling himself Pain killed Hanzo and took over the hidden rain. I didn't believe it of course. Even slowed down by age, I couldn't imagine Hanzo giving up his iron grip over the country. Hanzo's skills were greatly diminished, both by age and paranoia. I had imagined divine satisfaction from seeing him and those near to him crush, but instead it was rather hollow. A god, it seems, cannot find pleasure in the destruction of an ants. Jerry tried for a jovial tone but he came out force. So you're calling yourself a god now, huh? That's a big leap from the bumbling brat, I remember. And those eyes. What happened to Nagato? Why? Do you have his running on Yaiko? Hearing that name, Nurt's eyes widened. He might have not, well, know how they look, but he knew that. Name. As his captain had told him about it. Those eyes from Legends. So he's gonna face off against the S rank, Akaske, trained by Jiraiya, who has the eyes of the Sage of Six Path. Naruto wanted to fight someone strong, but this was just plain suicidal. I told you already, Sensei. Yaiko is dead. We are pain. We? The moment Naruto muttered that word, as five others could be seen at the tree limb, as Naruto saw them all with piercings. And to make it even worse, all of them had the Renegon. Impossible, Jerry says. He took a step back in shock. Six of you? Not impossible, Sensei. Still a miracle. As it was still the original one that spoke. As the other five thanked him as they were silent. Come, let me show you. He raised a hand. This time Naruto was the one that acted, throwing himself to the side and using his chains to pull Jiraiya down. As the trees that were behind them buckled, like they were struck by an imaginary force. As Jiraiya quickly regained his combat instinct as he got to his feet, just to spot a black cylinder that was fired between him and Naruto. The thing exploded. Naruto surrounded himself with chains as Jiraiya here extended but the both of them were blown away. As Jiraiya knew, outnumbered and separated, this would be a great disaster. He made his way back to Naruto but he was stopped. I am your opponent Jiraiya Sensei. The Aiko resembling pain said, you would be wise to not forget that. As he raised his hand again, Jiraiya prepared himself for another strange invisible blast. But it was a faint though, one of the others had got behind him, this one with long flowing orange hair. That would have been the envy of any Yamanaka. As Jiraiya moved back from the attack, his wrist was grabbed. As Jiraiya felt his entire body got cold. When he looked down, he saw something translucent being pulled from his body. His reflex took over and instead of pulling away, he slammed his shoulder into the man's chest. As it was enough to loosen his grip on his wrist. Jiraiya here turned to a spiky steel heart club as he brought her in and slapped into the man. As he jumped back, avoiding another invisible blast that ripped through the trees. His arm felt unnaturally cold and weak, but feeling and mobility was returning. He would have to be sure not to get touched by that one again. Still, what the hell was that? Yaiko was the one that spoke. My master over the Rengan is complete, Sensei. What you just experienced was a human path. As the human path picked himself up, not even looking bruised from the attack, 
as he looked for that blank look on his face. As Jerry neared his eyes, if he was start to worry about two of these bastards, he was worried about Naruto extremely now. Oddly enough, Naruto was thinking the same thing as he faced off against the two men that drew him away from Jiraiya. As Naruto jumped back as one of them tried to catch him in a beer hug. As he knew little about the legendary Dojutsu. Well, only from what he heard about Saru. Explanations. The gist that you remember though, only the Sage of Sixth Path, a legend, only possessed these eyes. There was, well, speculations that it had evolved into the Sharingan or Byakun over time. But that was just boasting, to boast their clan reputation. Because these eyes seem way more powerful. But the chance of these things developing into six different men, well, seven. If there was someone else out there named Nagato, that was quite rare. And the orange here, they had a connection. But Naruto knows we are able to pick up on sense of chemical dye. As it all frustrated Naruto, it was like a puzzle flowing in his head. But they refused to connect together. But that was the least of his words at the moment. As the ball headed one turned his hand into a buzz saw, the other one still shooting out missiles at him. He was unwilling to test his chains against a weapon like that. So instead he focused on the chubby one. As he started to call upon the Kyubi's chakra, two chains came from his tailbone. As others coiled tight there on his arm, as he sprinted forward, as another capsule came towards him. One of the tail's chains slammed into the capsule, shooting it back over to the robot path. As Naruto kept on running towards the chubby one, they were fast, that was for sure. But they were not faster than he was. It was their durability that was a problem. As the chain had raced off one of the man's arm, like his body was made from metal or something. This time, Naruto was taking no chances. His chains are the coat in the wind chakra as they approach. The man planted his feet into the ground and raised his hands in front of him. As Naruto looked at him like he was crazy, did he really think he could block this attack? Naruto would have scoffed, but Anbu had taught him to be wary of something like this. As he allowed his second tail chain to stab into the ground, in case. As Naruto lashed out his chain drill. But to his surprise, the thing dissolved right in front of his eyes. A strange blue bubble surrounded the man's hand. No lights, no call out of technique. The chakra was just sucked away from him. The man didn't even look windy like he put up some great force or barrier or something. It just looked like a normal everyday routine for him. As Naruto quickly realized why, when he dashed forward in a burst of energy, as the man brought down his fist, Naruto used a chain that he anchored in the ground to pull him away. As the man's fist cracked the earth, as Naruto landed in a stance, looking at this man more wearily, because he just completely sapped away his attack like nothing. Fine, we can do this old fashioned way, said Naruto, as he draw his sword from his back. He was glad that he got it replaced after his confrontation with Goring. He would want to go at a chakra thief with hand to hand. His chain suddenly whipped around, reacting to something that was caught in his vision. As he caught the caps in mid flight, as he swarmed around it like a nest. A moment later, they bulged out as the explosion went off, but they contained inside the chains. As Nurta glanced over, yeah, I haven't forgotten about you either. The whisker marks on Nurta's cheek deepened as another chain came from his spine. That's right, just keep making me angrier, he said. Meanwhile, Jiraiya had lead the two on a chase as he kept his hands together as he had to focus his chakra as he kicked off a tree trunk as the thing was obliterated. Yaiko has shown that he could use a repulsive and retraction force, almighty push and universal pull. The happy go survivor kid that challenged him all that years ago would have never come with names so pretentious. What happened to those three and where were Nagato and Conan? As he turned his kick into a spin, launching a crushing kick towards the human path. But the man turned diverting the kick to the side and avoiding the worst of it. Jerry occurs as he accepted the losses his kick back as he noted how Yaiko was just staring at him in a short distance away. Something was nagging at the back of his mind about that. Beside this a theory, he swung his hair around again as he hardened it at the last moment to make sure it had enough momentum. Instead of attacking though, he hit the ground as a great dust cloud rose up in the air as he saw Yaiko arm raise, no doubt to blast the distraction away. It wasn't distraction though, it was cover. As he dived into the dust spinning until he was behind the human path again. As he used the full force of his needle Jaito, and this time he succeeded. As he slammed into the human path, the thing was sent sailing his back arch from the crushing blow. A moment later, the cloud was blown away, but Jiraiya was already grinning. They didn't just share the ring gun, they share their fields of vision. Damn it, that was dangerous to two people.
Who was Naruto dealing with for? The only reason he wasn't panicking was that the fact that Yaiko was still fighting. He was sure if they managed to capture the blonde, they would have pulled back. Plus, the brat was rambunctious. No one was going to take him out of the hell of a fight. Speaking of which, his grin returned at full force as he felt his stalker calm at last. As he wasted no time, so many jutsu, as he was swallowed by smoke, as a human path sprinted towards him, trying to retaliate for the earlier blow. But the human path was sent sailing out of the smoke, as he hit that tree and kept on going, his limbs flying at awkward angles. Yaiko, watch all of this, his path did not see what his former sensei had done, but it must be something great to have damaged it. He didn't have to wander long though, as the smoke started to clear away as Jiraiya walked out. Jiraiya stood there now, as his entire demeanor had changed, his nose has grown, warts, larger, and the red tattoos had extended, and his eyes were a thing that bars for pupils, but two small toad were on his shoulders. You never showed us this, Jiraiya sensei, Pain said calmly. Well, a teacher never revealed all of your secrets, but I guess I can make a few exceptions for you, Yaiko. Here. As he went into a fighting stance, why don't I show you a few? Meanwhile, Naruto thought that he was holding his own quite well, but it seems like quite well wasn't good enough here. Anytime he tried to take one of the Akasuke out, the author would cover for their weaknesses. The one that could turn his body into a weapon was very fragile. If Naruto just got him in enough chains, he could shatter him. And the tubby one only had the chakra absorption to use. As Naruto was sure with four tails of the Kayubi chakra he could shred him, he just needed to get close enough. As they cover each other well though. Every time Naruto tried to get close to the absorption path, Baldi kept on throwing explosives. He scowled as he rose up in the air, supported by chains. Who am I fighting anyway, said Naruto. Geki though, the fat one said. Sure though, the robot path said. As Naruto was surprised how easy that was, and how creepy they were when he spoke. As Naruto raised himself a bit higher, pre the path and Azura path. Why are the strong ones either nuts? Percentric or just straight up lunatic. What's wrong with a bloody name? Mine is Naruto. It's a ramen topping. You don't hear me change it to damn Lord Naruto Uzumaki or Kami of Creation or something like that. The two Akasuke members merely watch him, neither rise into the jab. The Azure Pad merely raises his arm and fire another capsule. As Naruto swatted away that chain before it reached anywhere close to him, it wasn't explosive though, as the thing burst into a thick cloud of black smoke that enveloped the air around him. At the same time the Prita Pat rushed forward, his hand extended as he extended his chakra absorption as wide as it would go. As he passed right under Naruto the chains that anchored Naruto to the ground dissipated. The tubby man realized his mistake as Naruto descended down towards him, his sword drawn. As the Azura path was too far behind. As he created a canister as he pointed towards Naruto and he fired the pale energy but Naruto tucked his head. At the last moment Naruto unfurled, knowing that using the chains against this one was useless. As a black rod came from the pre path sleeve, but Naruto diverted it aside, just as Nizumi had thought him. As he delivered a wicked slash right across the pre path chest, as he felt the sword dig deep. As he grinned, as he pressed his advantage, that was the moment that left his foot, well uncertain on the ground. As the ground suddenly exploded outwards, as he jumped up quick enough, but he got a nasty gash on the leg. From the creature, it really was a good thing, jet black, with orange highlights. With a large spike through his head, it was an enormous centipede, he could tell that much, and likely some kind of a summon. But that wasn't what grabbed his focus though. Does anyone here not have the Renegon? He growled, extending a long breath, as a cut on his leg healed rapidly. But he realized something, neither of these two summoned the creature, he would have realized that. That meant one of the others were hiding nearby, another one watching. So they were hiding because they didn't think that they need to come out and fight him as well. They think these two can handle him. As Naruto's face started split into a grin, not because of him willingly, but because of the influx of the Kayubi's chakra, changed his appearance even more. Four miles away, a head snapped towards the distant. As the person felt the fluctuation of the Kayubi's chakra, I feel it too, said Nezumi. As she was worrying, they were on their way to a mission but they stopped when they felt that familiar sensation. That's a lot, Kuma said. As he knew that Naruto really pushed himself that far in training. So for him to go this much. Well, said Teiko, trying to keep his voice light despite the anxiety that he was feeling at the moment. Shall we go see what kind of trouble 
he has got himself into. Time skip. The first hit that Jarea landed on the human path was no joke. The spine had been snapped. Pain was forced to bring out his revival path. He was sure that Jarea noticed his human path. Come back like he was nothing, even though after that devastating blow. As Jarea had noticed the other path though, despite his claims of being a god, despite everything that he preached, Pain was nervous. Nervous of that white hair man you could remember so clearly. The sense of three orphans with unshakable self confidence, with a mysterious power around him at always. It seems like he knew everything back then. A friend, a teacher, a father figure to the three of them. And now he was fighting that same man to keep him away from the Kaibe bitch and Jolke. The child had proven difficult to take down. He had impressive control of the beast chakra and he was clearly well trained in the thing used. While he had peered at the two paths to cover each other's weaknesses, the child still hadn't been stopped. It had annoyed him to bring out the animal path. He had been bringing the body away from the conflict in hopes of when they do actually capture Jinjolke, they could be summoned and safe distance away. Far enough for Jira could not follow them. But that plan was now untenable. Still, the combined power of three paths should be more than enough to handle the child. But still, all he has to do is keep Jira busy until then. But that was proving to be a lot more difficult than it seems. As he raised the arm, universal pull, as he target Jarea directly, where the man had been holding off a direct assault from the human and revival path. If only he could stab down for chakra rods, he could disturb whatever thing that was giving him this amazing strength. As he prepared one to his side and caught it. But Jarea twisted his body in mid ear as he took a deep, long breath in. Pain was unconcerned until he felt. The two toads started joining the act as well, as he felt the almost chocolate they were gathering. Sage Art! Gomen! As Jaria spew out oil. As the toads spew out wind and flames. As the three things combine into a raging heat. As they surge forward, paint technique make it move even faster. Nearby trees caught flame and it didn't even reach them. As he could feel the overwhelming heat from where he was standing. He abandoned universal pull. As he crushed by the chakra rod in the engine and withdraw it. As he placed the other hand out, Almighty, push, he said. As a large gap in the center was blown away, as it blew right towards Jaria. But Jaria had created a wind spear and burst through his own technique, a resting gun already formed in his hand. But Jaria was tackled out of the ear by the human path. The moment he touched Jaria, he started to draw out the man's soul. It seemed harder now, like he was trying to uproot a tree. And that gave Jerry the time that he needed, as he lashed out a bone shattering kick that sent him flying off the tree limb. As Spain sent the revival pad to go and fix him. As Jerry's eyes were tracking the two of him, he couldn't allow Jerry to think about anything well too deep. He has already proven that he can destroy his path. This enhancement was most impressive, Jerry Sensei, but it's still not enough. In the face of a god. Well, I'm guessing that was a whole naming thing going on. That will make you tendo, right? Pain shrug, neither confirm nor denying it. We are pain. It is a message that we bring to the world. One of understanding over sheer loss. I never taught you arrogance at this, Yaiko. I thought that you would be proud, Sensei. We see the same thing that you do. As Jerry Lip turned to a scowl, I highly doubt that. Meanwhile, Nerd growled as he switched to the left side. Chains whipping out of his shoulder as he slam right into the rhino summon, as they rip right across his face, even though as the thing groaned in pain. The robot pat rushed forward, a blade coming from his back like a scorpion. Chains came around Ruto as the tail bounced right off of them, as the pre pad came there to absorb the chakra chains away. But Naruto flew up in the air suddenly, as he had sent up a chain that attached to the bird that was flying. He flipped on the bird back. As two chains came from his back, as he strike the bird hard, forcing the thing into a nasty fall. As a cloud of smoke when the thing poofed away, cushioning his fall, as it had brought him down close to earth so he wouldn't drop from so far. And it also blocked his vision. A black rod stabbed him right in the back as he winked out in pain, as he was inches away from his spine. As near the chain started to fizzle, as something was invading his body. He grabbed the rod and pulled it out as he threw it right towards Pre the path who dodged it. As Naruto 
felt the reserves in his chakra lowered. He was losing ground here. He crossed his fingers as ten duplicates arrived, clean clones, as half of them leaped towards the pre the path. The others, they struck the other summons, wary of cutting them. After the incident with the dog that he just faced off against, the multi headed dog that has kept on coming. It had taken one of Pain's own chakra rods that he stole from the pre the path to get rid of that monstrosity. As Naruto shot forward towards the pre the path, as he knew that the thing could only absorb in that small bubble that was around him. But if he got a hold of him though, he could absorb his chakra. As Naruto used a chain to grab onto his blade and throw it, the big man was forced to block it with a chakra rod. As Naruto chains latched out 10 of them, each of them in a shuriken, as he went around the pre the path and went towards him. The pre the path extended his arms, he started to absorb the chakra from the chains. But the chains are then latched out with the shurikens as they stab right into his back. It was far from a killing blow, but that gave Naruto the time that he needed as he shot forward. As Naruto's fist covered in chains, he slammed it in the man's face. It was like a sledgehammer. As the man was insane before he crashed finally into a tree. Naruto cursed when he saw the man pick himself up, but something was wrong. Half of the piercing on his face had been torn out. The wounds were not bleeding, that was odd. But the man's face was sagging down, like he has received a stroke. And the most notable thing was his left eye, no longer had the Rinnegan. It was instead a glassy brown. Naruto had seen those eyes a lot of time before. Those eyes were the eyes of a dead man. As Naruto's eyes went wide, but he had to leap out of the way as the exploding canister landed. But he wasn't fast enough as the thing blew him straight towards the pre path. Even though the man lost one of his dojutsu, he hadn't slowed down at all. A chakra rod flying to his palm as he brought it down to impale Naruto. But instead, it met with hard steel. That was sloppiness on his head. As she countered the blow to the side, following up with a swipe that forced Pre the path to jump back. Naruto simply huffed from over Kuma's shoulder. As the man lowered him, she's right, Naruto, Saru said, as him and Teiko landed. Although, this is quite the situation you found yourself in, Saru said. Yeah, yeah, said Naruto, as he flexed his arm back into place. I was handling it. We can see that, said Teiko. As he looked at one of the ugly summons clattering around the battleground, things appeared to pause for now as the new arrivals were factored into pain plan, but that wouldn't last for too long. Where is Jerry Dono? Saru asked. As Naruto pointed off in the direction he had seen them at last, Kuma, go retrieve our wayward friend. As Saru turned back, anything else we should know, Naruto? He is a living weapon, he said, and he can absorb chakra, and somewhere around here, one of them is summoning these things. I don't know what they are, but they aren't people. Go for the piercings if you can. You are in folks, it's Haru. Let's get to work. Meanwhile, the grown quake as Gamahiro slammed his sword into the earth once again. As Jerry was on top of his shoulders, using his senses to try and pick out pain location. This is quite beneath me, Jerry Dano the Toad said. I thought I made it clear that I was old to be summoned with fights that are worthy of my blades. I assure you, Hero, these guys are plenty worthy. I fail to see how, Hero said as he sliced through trees that they were butter. As the revival path kept on dodging him. If dodging made them worthy, I will persist. You do that, Jerry said. As Ma knocked him on the back of the head. If you had just kept up your training, Jerry boy, you'd have been able to whap out these whipper coppers in, in a heartbeat. Yeah, no discipline in training and no discipline in fights. Right, Ma? You tell him, Pa. Maybe I could do it if you still stop bickering my ears, he said. As the both of them knocked him over the head. The playful banter only hide the anxiety they were feeling though. As the both of them thought knew about the legendary dojutsu of the ring gun. Gami Hero shifted violently as an invisible force slammed into him. As he skidded back and destroyed plenty of trees before he stabbed his blades into the ground stopping himself. As Yaiko finally showed himself. Jerry leaped forward with a Rasengan. gun. One. Two, Jiraiya said. Three, four, five. Almighty oh, push, said Yaiko. As Jiraiya abandoned Rasengan the moment he heard the first syllable uttered from the man's mouth. As he curled in on himself his hair, covering on his entire body until he resembled a porcupine. As the blast of force slammed into him, throwing him back. As Gamahiro slammed Jiraiya with his blade. After so many years of knowing each other and also trained together, he knew what Jiraiya was planning. As Jiraiya was sent rocketing back down towards Pain, 
Jerry was like a bullet as he came straight back down towards Spain. As Spain had no time to move out of the way. And if Jerry had timed it right, no time to summon one of those other invisible blasts. But he was not fighting, Yaiko alone. Instead, the human path put himself between them. But Jerry entire here was covered in chakra. Whatever the human path was doing, that made him feel so cold. When he was using chakra, it was less effective. But Jerry was moving too fast, his body crushed the human path into the ground, creating a large crater. Jerry called Creech 5 once again as he dived out of the way, a massive force slamming down. As he allowed pain to leave him off a bit, sparring with the man. I'm figuring out your tricks, Yaiko, he said, as he flashed through hand signs. I'm guessing that this was one you'd rather keep secret, as he slammed his hands to the ground before Pain could stop him. The creature that he crushed the human path into was suddenly replaced by a deep, chakra-infused swamp as it caught the revival path, who was going for the human path to revive him, as Jerry hadn't figured out how he can do that yet. Jerry here then spiked and flew towards Yaiko, as Tendo simply swatted him away with a force, but the moment they filled the air that was enough, as Pain's view of Gummy Hero was blocked. After all, their vision was linked, and the needles were blocking the vision, not to mention the other two was in the ground. As Gummy Hero brought down his blade, as the two paths in the swamp were crushed violently. Now, he only had to pray that the revival path couldn't revive himself, or he would be in trouble. Almighty push! Jerry is spin! As a chakraoid stabbed into his arm, he had twisted just in time, instead of it going into his spine. He tried to rip it out, but it was already messing up his internal control. As the nature engine was becoming wild and unstable, no way he was becoming one of those damn tall statues. As the rod had went in at an angle, and it was difficult to rip out as Jerry collapsed onto the ground. As Yaiko walked forward, his hand raised. No, it wasn't Yaiko. Jerry had suspected for a while now, but he didn't want to accept it. The foreign chakra invading with its own had confirmed it. His student was dead, and somebody. Probably Nagato was using his corpse like a puppet. Why Nagato? Why would you do this, Jerry said. You have no idea what we went through. After you left, Sensei, Pain said, in that dull tone of his. The fighting, the pain, the betrayal. Through it all, Yaiko maintained your ideals, leading us like no one else could have. And in the end, when Hanzo stood in front of us, demanding his life for Konans, he threw himself upon my kunai without flinching. The pain of that loss was what granted me power, and I will show that understand to every other nation, so they too will know. Loss. So they too can understand pain. Only then, we will have peace. Jiraiya finally ripped the chakra rod right out. That's not what I taught you. And can you really say, Yaiko would have wanted this? As he motioned to the corpse in front of him. It doesn't matter what you would have wanted, Sensei. But, through this, I am granting him the figurehead of the new world that I am creating. Jiraiya sigh, I don't think I will ever understand. What did this to you, Nagato? Jiraiya control was still a bit messed up, but he already could feel Ma and Pa molding their own technique. As the both of them had stayed quiet until now. No, Sensei, said Nagato. I don't- Kuma kick! Jiraiya blinking surprise as pain was cut off mid-sentence, as he was sent sailing through the trees. Thanks to Sage Mode, he saw the man's face curled in around the man's knee. He was sure though that it wouldn't put the man down for long. Yaiko's body was much sturdier than the other. Thanks, Apachai. As the Hulk of a man helped Jerry to his feet. Jiraiya san, it's Kuma. You know we're not supposed to say our real names. As Jiraiya chuckled. As he remembered this kid when he had rescued him from his old underground fighting days. Of course, my bad. I assume if you're here, the rest of your misfit squad is about. Yeah, they sent me to go get you, so we can all fight together. Jiraiya breathed a silent sigh of relief. That meant the others were supporting Naruto that was a load off his mind. It was then that he noticed Pain picking himself back up, as Pain had emotion in his face. The first sign of emotion since the battle began. But that emotion was irritation. Yes, why don't we go do that? Quickly. Meanwhile, the trees were Kono and Ninja home. Teiko had made it well and special of his to be able to sneak and watch his opponent. Something that well, he had gotten very used to over the years. So at the moment he was currently watching the third path that was in the forest. As the thing was very good at hiding, their presence was mass. The chakra eliminated their scent as well. And they weren't making a single sound. But right now, he wasn't dragging them. He was tracking the summoning creature they were hiding inside. Based on what he could see, it was some kind of giant chameleon. 
appropriate but not perfect. Something that large always left a mark on the environment even if it was just the way they scattered the bushes when they moved through. He had real respect for the Aberame clan as few people pay attention to the insects on the ground. As he could tell the exact location of the chameleon, the way the tree was turning a bit different than it should. Take grin under his mask as this was a perfect viewing point from the battle. Meanwhile, Naruto felt invincible, fighting with his squad once again, with the Kaibin's power rushing through his veins as he dropped from the sky. As he slammed his chained hands into an ox head, the thing face smacked in the ground with so much force that it was buried on the ground for a few seconds. As Naruto chains latched on the thing's neck, then he rushed on it back and he started to pull, anchoring the thing's feet to the ground with chains. Naruto snapped the thing's neck. As he shoot forward as there was a crab, spewing out white foam from his mouth trying to get Naruto, but Naruto slide under it, lashing with two chains that wrapped around its claw. As he pulled himself right towards it, but the thing spew out the white foam once again. But Naruto had a chain anchor in the ground as he used to pull himself back. He then released as he launched straight toward the thing, the trail coming around his arm as he tear right through the thing's forehead, ripping through the other side. As the thing poofed away. Naruto was about to turn his attention towards the panda when the forest erupted in a massive explosion. The wave of air alone blew Naruto away. The panda poofed away. Good. Teiko had taken on the summoner or removed him from the fight. Teiko always have a flair for a dramatic. He probably blew that thing to sky high. As Naruto pulled his blade as he turned towards Nezumi's fight, as he knew that Saru could take care of himself, not that he doubted Nezumi. But it was time to see if all those unwanted sword fighting style in his head was going to be put to good use. Meanwhile in the trees, someone was watching the entire ordeal. As he had saw the Anvu team arrive, he had saw everything. Pain would have been able to subdue the Kayubi Jinjulke if it wasn't for them. And now, the Kayubi Jinjulke might escape. But the situation here, a long time ago Pain has become a strange variable in the plan. To the point where if left unchecked, he can become rather disaster into the plan. The boy was never supposed to take to the eyes so well, certainly not summoning the Gato statue. As the thing that was currently watching the entire battle right now decided to just wait, after all he has been waiting for a long time. He would just ensure the pieces fell where they should in the background, as he sent that subtle signal into the earth, as it wanted to see how all of this will conclude. Time skip. Pain moved through the forest, as he scowled, as he was unnerved by the loss of the animal path. Any escape plan that he will make now will be much more difficult without removing all the obstacles in his way. The envoy unit that came from the fight was really unplanned. It was harder to account for Konoha movements since losing Sasura's spy in the village. Still, he had been handling Jiraiya perfectly well before they arrived. Dealing with a few more grunts would not improve difficulty too much even though they were putting up a remarkable fight. As he watched through his remaining path's eyes, knowing the woman remarkable, so technique. But with three of the other pads taking out of the equation, he doubled the chakra sent to the other three remaining. Each was now twice as strong and he made good use of that, as the Azure path was the always difficult as one to control, shifting his body like that into various weapons. But with his attention not split so much anymore, it was quite easier, as the body ripped off his cloak, showing his forearms now. As the Taijutsu got only intensified, the monkey mask captain shifted his feet clearly looking for an opening but he would never find one. His Renegon could see his enemy move and the Azura path also had two other faces. After Tendo it was his most powerful body, arms strong enough to tear steel. This man is simple, normal Taijutsu stood no chance. He was more concerned about his Prita path, without that one subduing the Kyubi Jinjulke would be difficult as the woman was blocking all of his swipe through her blade. As the woman wasn't using any flurry of chakra or any techniques, she just used chakra to enhance her movements in her body. Pure Kinjutsu for the absorption path was a bad matchup, as he pressed harder knowing that if he didn't finish her soon, one of the others might get the drop on the body. He decided to force Tendo to take out the pace slightly. A god shouldn't be impatient but he need to finish this quickly. It came so suddenly, one moment he was keeping track on the fight, the next moment, one of the path arms fall to his side and then another one. As Robot Path was losing his arms, as Pain was confused, his connection with the puppet body was weakening. He soon noticed why as he noticed black piercing at his feet. He was so focused on where the man's hands were, he did not notice what they were actually doing. Still, to remove his pad piercing in the middle of a Taijutsu battle, he scowled as the robot pad jumped away, as the top of his head split forward, showing a canister inside. 
as Chunker started to build on the tip. As he released the exploding energy, as he maintained it for a solid 3 seconds, nothing could survive that blast. But no one was there. You should not look down from the middle of the fight. A calm voice said in the robot path ears, a substitution. The Taiju has been so natural, so fast paced. He had forgotten one of the most, one of the earliest stage of a shinobi technique training. It was too late though, as his connection with the robot path cut out completely. Through the absorption path eye he saw the man removing the piercings, dropping him to the ground. As he glanced at him, as he threw one of the piercings as he dropped to the ground. How dare they mock God. Meanwhile, Nerd did not have to intervene. As he watched Nezumi remove the black rod as the man collapsed onto the ground. Incoming, as Jiraiya and Kuma came in. Pain emerged a few seconds later, calmly pacing forward that front in his face. This has gone on long enough, he said, as he glared at all of them. Tall words, Nagato, said Jiraiya. As his hand was to his side, one of them limping a bit. But otherwise he seemed fine. To my count, you're down to your last puppet. You understand nothing, Sensei, Pain said. His eyes narrow violently. Every path that I lose allow me to funnel more power into the last remaining one. You stand no chance against me. Surrender the Kayubichin Jolke, and I may let you go unharmed. Jerry glanced towards Naruto. I couldn't do that if I wanted to. But you're right, Nagato. Things have gone far enough. I don't know what drove you to this, but I'm putting an end to it right now. If that is what you decided, said Bane. Take over through that moment of attack as he flew from a tree limb without even a whisper. As his arm was outstretched for a knife and a strike, Pain didn't even turn as he simply grabbed Taiko by the neck and smashed him into the earth. Crack spread under Taiko as he heard the gas swimming from the man. It appears I'm being underestimated, said Pain. As Nizumi was in front of him, as she had burst off with so much speed, her sword flashing out faster than Ruta's ever seen. As Pain pulled a chakra and blocked it, before his hand pointed towards her as he blew her away. As he looked at the black rod, there were deep scratches in it. That is actually fairly impressive, he said. He stepped back as Saru stepped into his guard with a blur of taijutsu movements. But Pain used the rod to strike at the man's hands before they could get to his body. Only a monkey would try the same trick twice, he said, his eyes moving rapidly. And only a fool assumed that he's the smartest man present. In the retort from under the mask, Pain tilted his body to the side, avoiding a stream of golden chains. As he spin and latched up the kick that drove Saru back. As it nearly cost him a leg though, Jerbe was in front of him, a risking gun, pulsed in his hand. Pain eyes bulged as the man was thrown back by the force. As Nezumi had recovered, trying to sweep his legs out or remove them entirely. But he stomped right on her blade, driving it into the earth. Pain was surprised that the blade did not shatter as she used the momentum to push him back up. Pain twisted his body's chain past his shoulder as he grabbed onto the chain. As he aimed his other hand at Saru, who had been moving closer. Universal pull. The man flew forward, unable to stop under pain force. He should have crashed it into Naruto in mid ear, but the both of them twisted as their feet met together instead. The chain that pain was holding onto grew spikes, forcing him to release it. In that moment, Naruto pushed right off Saru's feet, launching himself towards pain. This should have been the ended blow. Pain, five seconds hadn't fully given out yet, but. Pain simply absorbed the chalk from the chains around her to fist as he switched the path to Gekido as Pain caught his wrist and slammed him into the earth next to Teiko. The breath was driven from his lungs. None of the other path was this strong. A third arm burst from Pain's shoulder, shredding the Akashi clothing as it caught Nezumi's blade head on. She tried to pull away, but she could not as she jumped back and pulled another weapon. As she was making room for Jiraiya who charged in the larger sting gun. You do not learn Sensei, a fourth arm came from his shoulder as it shifted into a barrel, glowing with energy already. Jiraiya tilted the side to avoid the blast, but Pain was aiming at him. He shot Nezumi's sword instead, as the sword split the beams into two. Streak, one of them catching Nezumi in the side, the other catching Teiko in the wrist where the man had been trying to sneak upon Pain. A flurry of chains came towards him but they melted away against the the path. You do yourself when you feel you could face God and survive. By destroying my paths, you have just put all their power into one. As Saru moved in close, two of pain arms reached out and grabbed the man. As Saru only had a moment to see those eyes, before a hand drive through his stomach. As blood started to leak from under his mask, 
Taiko Kuma cried out as he shot forward as Spain threw with the captain as he tried to slap Kuma attacks away as Kuma was furious every attack was trying to rip Pain apart still Pain body was like a machine and wherever Kuma aimed Pain hands were slapping them away then Nezumi was there trying to slice off his arms one of his hands separated as cables came from it and grabbed onto the blade and pulled Nezumi forward as those same whips grabbed onto one of Kuma arms Pain then launched three devastating blows the crack of Kuma ribs, shoulder and knee could be heard. In the same remaining moment, Pain free hand flipped on seals, pausing. The weapon that him and Nezumi was holding suddenly enveloped in lightning as she cried out. In that second with her muscles locked and unable to release a grip, he pulled on the chain. But a kunai infusing wind chakra sliced the link between them, making Nezumi fall back. As Pain turned towards Teiko who had drawn the captain away. His hand was still outstretched from throwing the kunai. As Jerry joined in the fight in sage mode, back up to full force as Naruto dragged Kuma away from the battle. Pain tried to absorb the chakra from Jerry, but his, one of his arms turned to stone as he had to break it off and from that he didn't try it again. As Pain managed to grab onto Jerry, as he switched to the human path, as his arms started to pull back, as the translucent hole started to pull from Jerry. But to Jerry connected to nature in it was like uprooting a mountain. As Jerry's skin started to turn pale, still Jerry fought. As Pain couldn't just rip the man so right out of him. As it's connected to nature energy, it feel like a literal mountain. That one moment of hesitation, that one moment where Pain thought he could but he could not, gave Jerry the opportunity to move back as Pain shifted one of his arms into a blade. Jerry twist his body just in time. So he would not get severed, but he lost the arm, but that was better than losing his life. As the thing flew in the air with blood, the entire world seemed to freeze as the arm flapped down to the ground. Pain in the last toe to cleave Jerry right in half, but Nezumi shot into the fray. As Pain blew her back to another push, as she crashed the ground, as Naruto jumped into the fray and started to clash with him, Pain was confused. He felt Naruto getting stronger and faster, but the boy was not looking any feral. He was pulled on the Kayubi's chakra. Did this brat already learn how to control the fox chakra? As Naruto got faster and his moves more refined, as Naruto latched out with his chains, the pre the path absorbed him, but the flash of light from the absorption had pain to cover his entire body with his remaining arms because he could not see. As Nezumi came in on the left, he was expecting a blade, but a long staff with a blade tip on the end gave her a far reach as she sliced two, two of his arms caught him by surprise but to the pre the path over he lashed out as he grabbed onto Nezumi as she tried to slice him again both of his arms knocked away the weapon as Nezumi had a sword within her toes as she brought it up as he could already feel Naruto sprinting from behind him but pain was too close as one of his arms ripped forward but Nezumi discarded her mask and fire sent Mon towards his eye as that gave her enough momentum to twist her body so instead of his hand going through her heart it went through her right lung no less fatal but it was instantly lethal a good aunt would never let their death be pointless she was dropped pain turned but Naruto dived past him and caught Nezumi no 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 not again he muttered as he pressed his hand on the wound until it was drenched in her blood bad protocol Nezumi said the edge of her lips turned up in a smile as Naruto knew what she was regarding at as Anvus were supposed to focus on the targets always terrible Anvu as she smiled once again the only person that could help her now was Navi and they couldn't get her there in time as Naruto felt something snap within him something explode but guys be in subscribe right here if you want the next part of the to do like subscribe comment down below turn the notifications they posted but I'll move now. See you guys soon. Peace.